Welcome to another video from explainingthefuture.com. This time I'm going to talk about the future of food. Now today, in 2018, on a global scale, food is still something we haven't got right yet, because we know that about 1 in 9 people, over 800 million people on the planet, are going hungry at any one point in time. So clearly we've got to get better when it comes to the future of food. And yet we also know that in the decades ahead, food is going to come under increasing stress. There's a lot of challenges on the horizon when it comes to food production and food distribution. And so what I'm going to do in this video is to focus on those challenges to outline the issues we face, and then to turn to those technologies and related developments that could drive a future food revolution. Future food production faces many challenges. Not least, climate change threatens food security due to drought, flooding and more freak weather. Higher CO2 levels and rising temperatures may increase some crop yields. But, on average, climate change is expected to reduce the global production of rice, wheat and corn. In addition, measures to combat climate change will have a significant impact on food production and distribution as agriculture and transportation are major emitters of greenhouse gases. Future food production will also be impacted by available fresh water. For years, groundwater supplies have been diminishing in many countries, with an estimated 20% of the world's aquifers being overexploited. And yet, the demand for fresh water is expected to rise by 55% by 2025. Today, 71% of the fresh water tapped by humanity is used in agriculture. Fresh water availability is therefore set to be an increasing constraint on future food supply. Other challenges relate to the size and wealth of the global population. Today, there are around 7.6 billion human beings to feed. But this figure is expected to rise to 9.8 billion in 2050 and 11.2 billion in 2100. In addition, as countries industrialise and become richer, so their populations demand more meat. Indeed, global meat production has quadrupled in the past 50 years, and there is not enough land on the planet for all humans to eat as much meat as currently consumed in developed nations. Potentially, we could eat fewer animals and more fish. However, the world's oceans continue to be overfished, with reports suggesting that commercial fishing on a global scale will collapse entirely by 2050. While the challenges we face are stark, new technologies offer many opportunities to bolster and secure food production. For example, synthetic biology may create new plants and animals, or radically redesign existing living things. Already, aquabounty technologies have used synthetic biology to engineer a more sustainable salmon, and which consumes significantly less feed per kilogram of meat produced than any other animal or fish. The Open Plant Initiative is also working towards the reprogramming of crop metabolisms and plant architectures in order to rise to the challenges outlined earlier in this video. We may also spark a revolution by producing some food in vertical farms or using other forms of urban agriculture. Growing plants indoors does present major challenges. However, crops raised in a controlled environment require fewer or no pesticides and can potentially be produced very locally indeed. By employing hydroponics, water consumption may also be reduced by 70%, or by up to 98% if aeroponics is utilised to spray water and nutrients onto the roots of plants. Future urban agriculture may even take place in factories that grow synthetic meat. Increasingly, we are also likely to industrially cultivate insects as an efficient protein source. Both on the farm and in the factory, AI and robots are set to improve logistics, monitor crops and enable precision agriculture. For example, fleets of small autonomous tractors could increase yield per acre. In fact, according to Goldman Sachs, the use of autonomous agricultural vehicles, farm robots and drones could result in farm yields rising by more than 70% by 2050.
So, what will the food industry look like in 2030 and beyond? Well, for a start, I predict a return to more local sourcing and more local production, with an increasing focus on the consequence as well as the cost of food production and transportation. Secondly, we will consume less natural meat, with genetically modified and synthetically modified organisms an increasing proportion of many diets. Thirdly, I expect a trend for improved logistics and more automation. Already, the food industry is a top five user of industrial robots, and while today these are mainly used in factories, in the future we will see far more robots on farms. In turn, this will make food production increasingly capital intensive, which could lead to more vertical integration. Another major trend will be the use of AI and future quantum computers to gain a better genetic and molecular understanding of our food, our bodies and the human microbiome. This will enable us to optimise food and nutrition and may lead to the creation of personalised nutraceuticals. In the past few decades across developed nations there has been a race to the bottom in parts of the food sector with the rise of low-cost junk and convenience products. And yet in the years ahead I think we'll witness a parallel race to the top with some consumers prepared to pay for optimised diets that will help to maximise their health and lifespan. Finally, food will be a growing proportion of the economy, with more people spending more of their income on food. Given the pressures on global food supply that I've outlined, to me this seems inevitable. Quite what we will spend less of our money on as food becomes more expensive is also a significant question that needs to be considered by many other industries. I work in a great many different industrial sectors and in the past few years I've done quite a lot of work in the food industry. And one of the things that's struck me as being really interesting about that is that compared to almost any other sector the food industry is unique in that it can predict with great certainty the demand for its products in the years ahead. Subject to us not having a mass depopulation due to say a nuclear war or a global pandemic, we know roughly how many people will be on the earth in, in the coming decades, we know roughly where they're going to be and how much food they will require. And therefore, unlike many other sectors I work in, where people worry about their whole market disappearing because of said new technologies, food doesn't face that challenge. And that should mean that food can be a bit more innovative and a bit more certain in terms of investing in new technologies and trying to drive the next food revolution. But now that is it for another video. If you enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.